everybody in the virtual world. This is your host, Joseph Francis, and welcome to another episode of Heat and Receipts, brought to you by Execution Entertainment and fan to fan So, we're going to get right into this because we got so many wrestling to talk, so much wrestling to talk, and it's going to be amazing. I think we're going to have a good discussion. We're going to bring in our panel right away, and we are going right to the panel. It's got... Heidi on my right, I got Calvin in Virtual World Land on my left, uh, and how is everybody doing? Good. Real good. I love yeah. it. Yeah, what she said. We good. <laughs> yeah. That's See, right. they just bugging. I, <laughs> we bad. I want to say that I am repping a very good, very good man in the wrestling business right now, and that is Kenny Omega, brings us to our first topic, and the first topic is... History being made um, in the form of pro- cross promotional uh, uh, work, creative, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Kenny Omega appearing on Impact Wrestling on Tuesday. The very next night, AOW appearing on uh, AW as their champion. They are the heavyweight champion. On Saturday, appearing at Resolution and then wrestling, I believe to defend his other title, which is the AAA belt from uh, uh, the Mexican Federation. So he's making history all over the world. So the bottom line is, you know, we have so many, like, interesting interesting things happen. I can't talk today. I I don't know know. what's going on. It's fine. And one of those things is that we are seeing somebody who is the world heavyweight champion of one promotion going over to the champion of another promotion and and going over and appearing on television great for kenny omega i'm sure he's getting paid by both here's the question uh is this going to lead to tony khan buying impact wrestling because we know impact wrestling was not doing well as of like a month and a half three months ago and all of a sudden their ratings are boosted and and now we're seeing this is this the sign of things to come calvin i'm gonna let you lead off what do you think well, obviously, this is so big that it's taking the words out of your mouth, literally. But we are <laughs> okay with that. Okay, we are all right with the fact that you were so blown away that it took half I'm your shocked. vocabulary with it. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> um, you, it has it has good implications, and and maybe I don't want to see him buy it, buy it, but like some kind of a merger, right? Mm-hmm. Because. I mean, he's new in the game. He's inspired, but you still got to have the people who kind of know the business somewhat. So I would love to see, though, a merger like between two two of the more major uh, promotions out there and to see what could happen. Um, I don't know if we talked about this on air, but, you know, as as we've seen, you know, some stuff, some stuff teased with the former Bullet Club and things like that. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It looked like it could be uh, it looked like it could be pretty hot. Yeah, I mean, that Ken Anderson video with Kenny Omega, I love the way they, they spurned and they got Ken Anderson like going back to the Bullet Club days. Boom, boom, bang, bang. Um, so this is what I'm going to ask you really quick, Cal- Calvin. You think mm-hmm. um, if if Tony Khan buys Impact Wrestling, if he says, mm-hmm. I'm going to buy this and this is going to be our second show, you think that's going to be enough to take down WWE? No, I never fully think that it's going to be enough to take it down because you're going to have those those faithful, right? When you go on the message boards and you go on the things, there's still some people that feel like WWE is the tops and the this and the that for whatever reason. So, I mean, it might take it over. Don't get me wrong, like WCW did back in the day, but I don't think it's going to be enough to like take it, uh, keep it out of business or anything like that. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So, Heidi, now you see what's going on. Yeah. This is this was what happened in night in two thousand when WCW was starting to tank because they were paying mm-hmm. so many contracts, and then in two thousand three, Vincent McMahon bought WCW. Mm-hmm. So Tony Khan has a lot of money. Tony Khan owns a what? football team. He ha- has that Middle His Eastern family. Money. Yeah, and yeah. and he will and a, fo- and a soccer team. And look, yeah. I think it, it in a way it doesn't matter if he buys it or not. I mean, I think they could probably use the influx of cash, judging by um, their performance center and their costumes. But um, you yeah, know, she it, watched it almost, Impact yeah, Wrestling it's, for it's, the first time. Yeah, Woo! and was not. I love the wrestling. I the love wrestling the wrestling, and I love the wrestlers. They need help with what they're wearing, but that's like a whole other thing. And then yeah. the also the space is terrible. But <laughs> but yeah. the yeah. the thing is, 
um, it, it almost doesn't matter. Like, so if he buys it, great. If he doesn't, like, he's clearly playing the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Yeah. He's clearly telegraphing, we talked about this before, that he's approaching ownership of a promotion very differently than Vince, almost almost actually in in definitionally opposite of Vince, yes. how he does how he does his business. So whether they're just allies um, or whether he owns it, I loved the, I love the crossover promotions they're doing. The the Tony Khan, last thing I'll say, the Tony Khan, Tony Schiavone sort of paid Advertisement that looked like yeah. it was from like cable TV, like crappy, like cable TV, like like no production values at all. Yep. Hilarious, like so great. It Love was. the energy between Don Callis and Kenny Omega, and then and then um, uh, Anderson. Like that. That's just I love. Promos can be ridiculous, but it's also in a way they feel real when you can just see that energy. So it was, yes. it's just, it's fantastic. Like everything about it is great. I, I want, I, the one thing I want to say is that it, that you're absolutely right. That paid advertisement is exactly what wrestling is. It's the authenticity, it's authenticity of mm-hmm. wrestling, right? Yeah. And it was hilarious. The one thing I want to say is that their goal is to take down this juggernaut, this monopoly that has had its grip on uh, the wrestling world since probably 2003, 2004. Although TNA had like about a, a two or three run, two or three year run where I was so excited. I mean, TNA brought us, I think, one of the best storylines in the Aces and Eights. The last time I watched Impact Wrestling was when the Hardys were there. And it was Broken Matt talking about, um, you know, his vessel. Um <laughs> <laughs> and and fighting Jeff Hardy and mm-hmm. they had and then it, and then we saw Brother Nero which I've seen we Brother haven't Nero. seen in WWE no no but I've seen Brother see. Nero yeah but or, that being or said, Willow or Willow exactly Willow was another as a whole other beast but the thing is is that now for the first time in so many years I watched Impact Wrestling so AEW is doing something that Impact Wrestling couldn't do on its own on its own the only thing that we have reported. In terms of impact wrestling in the last, like since we our inception, is Tessa Blanchard yeah, winning that? But also look what AEW did. They got their third highest ratings of all time. They're crushing <laughs> NXT. So they're smart enough to know, but that it's it's good for it's good for Impact and it's good for AEW. I mean, this is brilliant. It's yes. brilliant, brilliant business thinking. I have a lot of respect for Tony Khan or whoever it was that dreamed this up because it's great. Now this is why, and this is also why I say though that WWE will probably won't be taken out, taken out. I respect Tony Khan. I love AEW and what they're doing, and we know that the differences are the creative freedom that they're giving some of the other wrestlers, right? Like the Chris Jericho's, mm-hmm. the the obviously the Cody Rhodes because he's a big part of it, right? The Young yeah. Bucks and people like that. But Tony Khan is already rich in buying wrestling and and relying on that. Vince McMahon is wrestling rich. Like this right. man became a billionaire because of wrestling. So in a way, yes, he was like wrestling for a while, right? Like he took it from just being territories and things like that. So like there's a way, like granted, I think he's lost a lot of touch. And I think the things that will help yeah. WWE are some of the things that AEW has, right? Like giving certain people creative freedoms. Mm-hmm. And we all agree that once Vince is gone, you know what I mean? But he also has a way of making like the business of wrestling be what it is. And I don't I think know. that's fully ever going to change. You can't take that away from him. You, that's you true. You cannot take it away from him. So one, I think it's a concession here. We don't think WWE is going anywhere. But what they're doing is a monumental. I think the best thing that we saw from this whole thing was the fact that it is just amazing to, to, to imagine you know, they showed Rich Swan getting a little jealous and annoyed that this was happening. And I think that when you saw that, it's like, okay, this is the possibilities that could happen. Are we going to see the Young Bucks fight yes, Anderson, we are, and, for sure. uh, Anderson and Gallows? Because to me, that's the marquee matchup. Good. Are we going to see John Moxley come and, 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 and take out some of the Impact wrestler guys? I'd like to see Moxley versus Sammy Callahan, I actually uh, think. Well, I'd like to see somebody. I was I watched that dude one t- twice total, and I want someone to mop the floor with his yes. head. So <laughs> yes. he's very he's a very good very heel. good he's heel as all very hell, but good he's heel. a good heel. Um, so 
I love that. I think wrestling is history. I think wrestling, if they continue on this path, it's going to be a great history. Once again, if you're watching at home, I want you guys to like the button, like the video, subscribe to the channel because we need subscribers. In the last like like week, we've gone up enough, like 60 to 70 subscribers. It's been amazing. So it's been a really good. We're going to continue to grow and we're going to have more episodes of Heat and Receipts. The next topic is a little bit of a, you know... Uh, a little controversial and in, in terms of is it important and i do have a i do have a sort of way that it is important and my co-host heidi didn't really want to talk about it. No, she that, was like why that's not true she was kind of like why that was the expression i think she, i said i know why you want to talk about well, it i think that's what i know because mm -hmm. she thought because back in the day mm -hmm. and we are talking about eva marie reportedly coming back to the WWE. For those who don't know, Eva Marie was in WWE from about 2015 to about 2017. She was also on Total Divas. She also had a ton of scrutiny about the fact of her wrestling ability. Um, some of that could have been attributed to WWE Creative not booking her properly. But that being said, she there are reports that she is making a comeback. She has been at the WWE Performance Center for the last couple of months. Um, she, there was a report that she was supposed to debut at the Survivor Series or re-debut. That didn't happen. Um, apparently she has been working on her craft. She has been working to become a better wrestler. And that was one of the things she didn't like about her first run, that her wrestling ability wasn't up there. It wasn't great. So the whole question is, and this is the state of women's wrestling. And I think this is what we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. The state of women's wrestling is in a dire need for some fresh meat that can actually wrestle. AEW has struggles with the wrestling division, and that is the case. Eva Marie, WWE right now has a shortage of really good wrestlers. It's probably the same six that you see all the time. Maybe seven if you include like a Nikki Cross or somebody that level who can wrestle really well. But the promos are lacking. But there is a huge question that is happening here. We brought up several times on previous episodes of Heat and Receipts that you, if you guys haven't seen it, check it out, where we asked the question, is WWE going back in time to the diva error? Okay? And Eva Marie is the representation of the diva error, that pretty, really gorgeous, hot, like, diva. Hey, you went, uh, did you only find three ways of yes, saying how hot she was? Only I'm three. sorry. Do you and want me to no, pull out that? Nobody at the, Should I pull out the thesaurus so that we can find some other ways for you to smoking yeah. hottie? Yes. Sexy. All of that. All of that. A Calvin, am I wrong? Hey, don't drag me into this. I'm, just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here enjoying it. So, so apparently she's attractive. Go she's on. She's attractive. Trying to get me some so popcorn. the point is... She is attractive, but oh. no wrestling ability. So here's my question, and I'm going to uh -huh. go right to Heidi first. Uh -huh, yeah. The first thing I'm going to say is, do you think WWE could use the Eva Marie, who no. has to prove something, being that Charlotte is gone, being no. that Becky is gone, being that all these top-notch hey. people are gone, yeah. and being that the yeah, yeah. one more part of that is the people not being... In, in the people that are there not taking the brass ring, not stepping right. up and being good wrestlers. I want to stop you right there. WWE has plenty of really good women's wrestlers because let's not forget NXT where there's actually a, a whole bunch of that fantastic... That Vince doesn't like. Yeah, but that's not the issue, right? The issue is not, <laughs> as you delightfully put it, fresh meat. The, uh, the issue is crap storytelling, that the yeah. characters are terrible and the storylines are terrible, right? And yes, it is true that you have a few female wrestlers in there that are, they hesitate a lot, they pull their punches, they, they are afraid of getting hurt. You can, uh, you, can vis you can see that they're afraid of getting hurt and they, they, they're terrible because of it. But I don't actually think the problem is that they don't have good wrestlers. I think the bigger problem is they don't have storytelling. So when it comes to Eva Marie, I think it all boils down to, is she actually going to be a good wrestler this time around? Because we do not need a return to the diva era. No, it would be, it would feel like, it would feel horrible after going through the era of, of Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch and Ronda Rousey mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and, you know, not my favorite, but, um. Uh, but, you know, actually, I love Sasha, but also Bailey. Like, they're great wrestlers. They're hard hitters. I would just be very, very sad to see a return to more 
frankly, even Marie is a Lana. And, and, I, and yeah, I'm and so annoyed about the Lana storyline. The idea that we're going to just get redheaded Lana just is tick. So I hope that's Do not you know, it. I hope that's not it. Let me it. tell you something very interesting. You know the music that Lana comes out to and the beat? That was supposed to be Eva Marie's uh, yeah, character. Yeah, because... And, and when Eva Marie left, they gave it to Lana. They said, Lana, you can have it. So that's going to be interesting. And the one yeah. thing I want to say, and really quick, and I'm going to throw it to Calvin and see, and see what he says. I... Don't think Eva Marie coming back is the best idea unless she is going to be like the people you just said. She's going to be a wrestler and not just a pretty face. I don't care about the pretty face. I don't want to see Diva era wrestling. It was horrible at the time when I was a teenager, young 20s. Yeah, it was great. It was sexy. It was like, oh, this is basically softcore porn. But the, now I've been introduced to a better state of women's wrestling that mm -hmm. I love, and that is awesome. I want to see that continue. And the fact that Lana is doing what she's doing, and the fact that we have these other people that are doing what they're doing, I need to see hard-hitting wrestling. And Eva Marie coming back without that. The one thing we will say, and we will say she's been taking MMA for the last couple of years. Her, She's still married to the same guy who is a fitness coach. So all of those things could translate to you could be a serious badass. However, is mm -hmm. WWE going to book her like that? So Calvin, do you feel that Eva Marie coming back to WWE is a good thing? Mm, yet to see. Do I think it is? The way that I the way that I foresee it going, no, and I'm gonna tell you why, and, and it's a tie-in, right? So as I was saying earlier, uh, well, actually, you weren't there, but I was telling Heidi I was watching this thing about Marvel, and they were talking about women superheroes and how it's gone from what it was to what it is now, Absolutely. right? And, and and basically, it wasn't just adding the women, right? Because the, these women were saying like, hey, we got into here. And we even wondered why, right? Like, I'm just trying to be one of the dudes. I'm trying to write these characters as this. And one of the ladies realized, until I'm telling authentic stories to Heidi's point, I can't have these women acting like the men, right? And, and just reacting mm -hmm. the same because because they weren't the same. So, but you see, even with men, right? Like, like what's the difference between Dean Ambrose and John Moxley? You can't put these people into a box, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not even reinventing. You got to let these women tell a story, yes. right? And not the story that Vince wants to tell, but all of them have a, a certain sort of whatever, right? Like Alexa Bliss, she started out as a cheerleader, and then it was like, That's so nice. "Yo, what do you want? What do you want to do?" You have an Alexa in your in your place. That's what it is. Yeah, I just realized <laughs> that, and, and right, and uh, but but she uh was able to channel a character that she wanted to be, right? Um, and, and you can tell, like, even with some of these good wrestlers, when they get into these storylines, like Heidi said, they're so stale, overused, mm -hmm. almost misogynistic, right? Like, right. It, not almost, they yeah, are. Yeah, fully. They are, pretty much. <laughs> but but the thing is, and I got I got to feel like there's more people like me out there, uh, and what I mean is dudes that feel like, what is this? Like, I, I don't need this to cheapen the sport as a whole, right? Like, I don't I don't want to get to a certain part and I'm like, oh, here we go again. Yeah. Right. We already know I, what's going to happen. I, and, and that's the whole point. The whole point is, is that if you're going to bring somebody back like this who has star power, they, you know, apparently E wanted to offer her and her husband their own uh, show. And after the Total Divas experience, Eva Marie didn't want to do it and said, no, I, it, it could ruin my marriage. And her husband never really wanted to do that anyway. Mm. So it ended up going to Miz and, Ma and, and Maurice because they ended up getting that. They needed a couple. So she obviously has the star power that if she was a good wrestler, she could compete with the best of them, right? But they got to they gotta let this woman. And I was actually happy. Reports are is that she, they wanted her to debut at the Survivor Series. She said no because she says she wasn't ready to return in the ring. She wants to get better. So if she keeps along that rate, it's going to yeah, be great. I've also heard a report that she's the secret admirer of Angel Garza. So if I know, which is all right, like so let's not all just spin it all street. positive yeah, here. She's also horrible. spent the last couple of years playing small parts in movies. I mean, yeah. none of that makes me feel like she's coming back like Becky Lynch. So yeah. Yeah. I, you can, I, we can hope for the best. I, I genuinely hope for the best. I want to say. Nine, Go ahead, Calvin. 90% of the women, because I heard you say she has, you know, the reports are she has star power. But if we're if we're completely honest, 90% of the women's WWE right, superstars, their star power is just based off of how hot people think they are. 
It's true. And who's yeah. hotter, right? It's absolutely like, true, but and and it's absolutely true. And it, it's it would be stupid to say that sex doesn't sell. Unfortunately, it does. But like I said, I don't want to see diva error wrestling. And Heidi, you make an excellent point that I want to just point out. I for, totally forgot about that. She is apparently the secret admirer, Angel Garza. Like, what are you doing? If that's true, I and, hope and it you is. know why that's stupid? We know she's married. Well, yes. Since when do they care about that? But yes, true. T- it's, it's just like, like the, I said, it's Lana and Bobby Lashley. The, the idea all that over you again. have to choose in this day and age between being hot and being a really great athlete. I mean, look at Lolo Jones. Like, there's plenty of women out there that are really hot and also really yeah. tough, amazing athletes like Becky Lynch. We don't have to be dipping into the model pool anymore. It's it's just not necessary. And that's what I was going to say really quick. And then we're going to move on to the last topic of tonight's heat and receipts. The one thing I want to say is that it is sad, but do we see AEW doing that? Do we see uh, Impact Wrestling doing that? And no, it's WWE. And here's the thing that WWE has that none of them have. WWE has Vince McMahon, who invented the TNA match. Calvin, you remember what the TNA match was. Yes, I do. Okay. Young, the young me appreciated that. The, yeah, young the, me appreciated that too. Yeah, we appreciated it, but now that we've been shown something great, we don't want to go back to that. And then the pillow match and the Halloween costume match and the food, and it's just like. Hey, let's not forget our favorite, the B and P. What was the B and P? Brawn panties all day. Everybody oh was yeah, in yeah, yeah, yeah. That, There was a brawn panties match that you and totally they and they up. wondered why women were no, no, no. fans of professional wrestling. The, no. there, there, there were bra and panty matches. Like there yes. wasn't just one. No, there was many matches. Look, there's there a lot of stuff that was messed up back then. Even it was go, fine. Lingerie, all that. Exactly. We don't want to go back that. So. No. Hopefully she comes back and she comes back with the toughness of what the women's division is in this day and age. That being said, we are going to move on to the final topic. But before we do, if you're watching us, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. We do that and make sure that you are seeing all the latest content on Heat and Receipts. We're going to keep doing wrestling debates. And when all the people get back, get back to their arenas and COVID is over, we are definitely going to be live from some events and oh, be yeah. interviewing you guys. That's what we're looking forward to and it's going to be amazing. So... Last topic of the night is a report coming out of WWE, going to WWE again, that WWE is sending some of their top stars Mm -hmm. to the Performance Center so that they could work on their craft. Uh, Some of the people named are are Dio Madden, which is part of Retribution, Otis, which, by the way, uh, Vince McMahon loves Otis. I don't know why all of a sudden this is happening. A few others, but I think the main name is Keith Lee. Uh, several reports saying Keith Lee uh, is not has not totally been sold by Vince McMahon. Like he doesn't believe that he could be a main event status. He doesn't feel like his character is translating. This could have something to do with the reason why he's had so many entrances and so many music changes and everything. Like they don't know what to do with him. But they are saying multiple times that this is what it is, and I that this is what's mm-hmm. going to happen. So Calvin. Do you think this is a good thing, or do you think this totally undermines the character? And are they just gonna like screw him up? I am totally confused by this line of thinking, you know. Uh, and I'm and 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 obviously, the people who want to be better at anything, but we're talking about wrestling, are going to continue to work and hone on their craft and things like that. I said it off camera, and I totally mean it, 100%. If you want to send anybody to anything, anything, <laughs> you send these damn writers back to uh-huh. somewhere, and you get them lined up. You get a decent storyline going. Like you, you learn how to tell a story with somebody besides Randy Orton, mm-hmm. Drew McIntyre. Mm-hmm. Roman Reigns, mm-hmm. you could throw Kevin Owens in there, but you can say that he's not really part of that story, right? Mm-hmm. But the reason, and it goes back to everything within WWE, especially the writing is what's making these people not perform or whatever. I don't know how they could translate Keith Lee is not ready for something. I mean, I could be missing something. I'm not a professional oh, wrestler I could... or... oh. I first of all, you're not missing a damn thing, and I just want to say that any writers' room that can make it so that I don't 
Did I get unhappy when I hear Rey Mysterio is coming up next? <laughs> Shame so on bad. you yeah, for so ruining bad. that man for me. Because she I love him, him so first, much. When she first saw him, she was like, oh and my was god, like, he's how, so amazing. How dare you make me... And same thing with Bobby Lashley. I mean, I love Bobby Lashley and I couldn't bear to hear his name for a while because of that storyline. So... I, I couldn't agree more. I, I will say that I'm hearing that one of the things I, I read was a different take on the the sending them back to the performance center. Not so much that Vince doesn't believe in these guys. They actually does like them. But there are aspects of their in-ring performance that he was not happy about and he wanted them to work on. Yeah. And, 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 so, it, and, and so he doesn't love everything about Keith Lee's in-ring performance, but he does believe in Keith Lee. I mean, Vince likes his big men. So and, and 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 there was a tweet that came directly from Gregory Hurricane Helms, and it, and it says and I quote: "Players that make it to the NBA, NFL, NHL, etc., don't stop practicing and drilling just because they made it to the top." Yeah. Quote unquote. Uh, being signed to a major promotion doesn't mean you stop trying to perfect your craft. That's which that's when your work you work even harder to perfect your craft. End quote. So, I mean. 100% agree with you. Like, that's a different perspective. This isn't like, I don't like you or I don't want to be. I don't. It's not you. a demotion. It's not a demotion yeah. because they're going to be back on Raw this Monday. Like, it's they're not going anywhere. But here's the thing that I want to say. First of all, there are reports that. So, first of all, let's go retribution really quick. Retribution, we know how much Heidi can't, Heidi can't stand, stand him. Hey, they're just fools. And, okay. But it's not Deal Madden. Who's the problem? It's the fake paper plate con- mask the con- well, and the and the lack of a true leader because we don't believe Ali is a main eventer. He's a mid card, and then on top of that, the fact that they just br- throw bricks through windows and call that oh we're intimidating you. You're not. The concept is bad. It's not that wrestlers that I'm blaming. Yeah, and Dio Madden going there like we've barely seen him wrestle. Maybe that's the reason why because they think he could hurt somebody. But there are several reports to say that Vince McMahon doesn't believe that Keith Lee is a main event star and doesn't believe that his his promos and wrestling ability translate well on this level. And in That's NXT, insane. Keith Lee was the one of the biggest stories of the year, winning that two championships. And then he came up here and in true Vince McMahon fashion, taking an NXT star and turning him... I know Calvin has something to say because he loves Keith Lee. Yes. I know you love Keith Lee. What do you think? Then why did you take him in the first place? I don't know. I don't know. It's a good question. That's a great question. How you how you look at somebody and you like yeah he got the stuff and then the moment he come there he like look I don't know if you proven yet homie so I'm gonna need you to change what I don't know I don't understand the logic I don't get it listen to me they there were reports. That in the beginning of him coming to WWE, there were reports that Keith Lee was in the running to win the Royal Rumble and go on to fight Drew McIntyre for the belt. That's how highly they thought of him. And now they're saying, wait, you need to work on your ring ability a little bit. We're not, we're feeling like it's our treasure. And several people have said, Vince McMahon doesn't believe in Keith Lee. And it, it's... And, you, and you see the way he's being booked. He's not being booked as, oh, let me squash people or be the dominant one. He's being booked as, okay, I'm going to lose and I'm going to bicker and I'm not really going to be in any kind of real storyline. Well, but it's just like you said, uh, you know, maybe it was last week, but you said it a couple of times. It's how Vince views NXT and anybody that's come through that system. He, he still sees it as development. He still sees it as you're not on par with the, the main roster when, let's be real, even just wrestling ability, Keith Lee would probably storm through half the quote-unquote main roster, right? right. Um, but you talk about, I mean, misusing whatever. How you got somebody like Andrade that put on a heck of a match with Drew McIntyre down at NXT? Yes, he did. And because you like Drew McIntyre more than you more than you like Andrade, or you, so mm-hmm. you sacrifice him, right? And now all of a sudden, he, he was nothing when matches. he was right. Like he yeah. had good matches. Him, Johnny Gargant, like he put on good matches. Yes, he did. And I, and, and, and this is the thing. So if you're gonna say that NXT is developmental, Finn Balor, why is he there? Why? Because you're trying to beat AEW in the ratings. That's why. That's the, that's the well, truth. I also I also think I've heard that Vince likes his big men to fight a certain way, right? So I yeah. guess that's like, I need you to be- throw yourself into the post like Braun Strowman and do like F5s over and over again. I don't know what it is that Vince likes to see his big men do, but apparently because Keith Lee has 
a yes. remarkably agile fighting style for a man his size. I think he's like, wait, big men aren't supposed to fight like this. And, and, and you know what's annoying to me about that? And then I'm going to do a couple honorable mentions so we can get on out of here. You know what's annoying about that is that one of the best talents that the WWE has on its roster right now is sitting at the broadcast booth. He's great. Oh. It's Samoa Joe. Big dude who moves like a little dude and is one of the toughest SOBs out there. So what are you doing? I don't understand. I, if it's if he sent him back for the purposes of keep getting better, I don't have a problem with that. If he sent Let's him back so. because he doesn't believe in what he's doing now, crazy. I don't know what you're doing. I don't get it. Just like Calvin, I'm like, what what are you doing? Yeah. So okay. want to do a couple honorable mentions while I got you two on the triple threat. Really quick, Roman Reigns' WrestleMania opponent apparently is mentioned these are the four contenders. Who would you pick? One, Goldberg. Two, The Rock. Three, Big E. Four, Seth Rollins. Who are you picking if you had your choice? Calvin, go. I'm going to say Seth Rollins because it's not the most obvious choice, and they never really had a chance to uh, to fight it out before. So I think that it would be interesting okay. to see him come back. And if they could if they could do something, I think they would have some pretty good chemistry. I mean, the other ones are pretty good, but, you know. I just want to say, Seth Rollins, that means he has to come back as a good guy because, you know, WWE doesn't do bad versus bad. And Romans is not gonna, Roman Reigns is not going to be a good guy anytime soon, and he should never be a good guy ever again. So that would be interesting. He's going to drop the Jesus persona. Heidi? My dream version would be The Rock, provided that The Rock can show up a bunch ahead of time to kind of play out the, oh, you think you're the head of the table? Yeah. Kind of like storyline between the two of them. I yeah. think that would be so hot, but I don't have my hopes up, really. Yeah, but he has that four would be movies amazing. this 2021 because yeah. a couple of them And his insurance is difficult with, yes. with so wrestling. So who would you so. pick if it's not The Rock? Um, I actually... I actually agree. I think that um, Seth Rollins would be an interesting, you know, revisiting the shield kind of thing. Because it's, it's still it's still like family. Yes. Right. Yes. So if he's still going on that angle, I'm gonna tell you right now. I like Seth Rollins. I like the storyline. I like what they do. The problem is, is that if we get Seth Rollins, Heidi, that means you're gonna have to deal with long monologues. No, I and you're gonna deal... have to de- and you're gonna have to deal with Seth Rollins as a good guy, which you were not happy with. Well, I like him better than I like the Messiah. Actually, yeah, like yeah. that made me not like it. So yes. I, I he's long gonna, you know for the he's old days. Come back and say, now that I have a child, I have seen the light. I'm I, a good you guy. know, or like they'll just be like Daniel Bryan, where suddenly he wasn't bad anymore, and we I all just live with it. I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I wanted to see Biggie. I wanted to see him take a step. And by the way, there was an interesting clip. I recommend yes, everybody to see the, the the interview between Paul Heyman and Biggie. On Talking Smack after SmackDown, Sh- Heidi hasn't seen it. I We're gonna take that. a look at that. It was amazing. It was I saw Paul it. Heyman. I feel like Biggie is gonna be the mid card for Roman Reigns' stable after that interview. That's what I feel like. That's gonna prelude. Interesting. No. no. I mean, he, here's no. the thing, Biggie, Biggie, and I'm gonna just say this, and then we're gonna get out of here. Biggie hasn't won a, a singles title yet. So uh, yeah. he needs. He hasn't won you, one you, singles title. It's all. You mean people. since? Wait, you mean since he's been in the New Day? Because remember, he was an Intercontinental Champion. Fine, yes, when he was with Dolph Ziggler. You're right, you're right. That was true. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> but it's been a long time, so I wouldn't mind him being mid-card with Roman Reigns, having an Intercontinental title, and then eventually him turning on each but other. Trying, however, uh, yeah, that'd be cool. However, Calvin, what do you want to say to the people as we get out of here? You know what? We always appreciate you sitting here with the heat and the receipts. Let us know what you want to hear. Let us know what you want to hear, baby. Because, you know, we're here for you. Love it. Love it. Heidi? I need to go before Calvin because I can't compete with his exits. <laughs> They're always so good. I, we'll do ladies bad. first next time. Yes, thank you. That would be great. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Tune in next week. <laughs> so much. So much. So all of you out there, we love wrestling. Keep watching wrestling. Wrestling is a great great creative outlet and it's and so many great things are going out there keep wrestling in your lives we want to see that watch next week's episode of heat and receipts we are going to be talking tlc and we're going to be talking about the return of the queen apparently they're not going to just have her return they are going to have her return with somebody that's reports that are solid that being said hope you stay healthy safe better safe than sorry we'll see you next week Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. We love you all. Thank you. Peace.